Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover the influence of anatomy and biomechanics on exercise selection for hypertrophy training. First, let's establish what exactly we mean when referring to anatomy and biomechanics. Since these are two different terms, let's cover each one individually. Anatomy refers to the physical structure of the tissue. In this case, we are referring to the structure of each individual muscle. The individual structure of each muscle will influence what exercises we choose. There are three primary factors we are concerned with regarding muscle anatomy. First is the origin. Like the name implies, this is where the muscle originates. Most muscles originate on a bone via a tendon, although there are exceptions to this. The second anatomical factor to consider is the insertion point. The insertion point is simply the other end of the muscle where it attaches. Much like the origin, the insertion of a muscle also usually attaches to a bone via a tendon. Origin and insertion points are exactly the same thing, although the origin is used to describe the attachment point closest to the midline of the body, while the insertion point is used to describe the attachment site furthest from the midline. And the last anatomical consideration is muscle architecture. This can become a very detailed discussion, but we only really need to be aware of the muscle fibre orientation. This refers to the direction that the muscle fibres span, which influences the line of pull. In some muscles, all the fibres run in the same direction, while other muscles have different fibres spanning in different directions. This leads us to biomechanics. Biomechanics is a very broad topic and can branch into many different nuanced areas. However relevant to this video, we are simply referring to what movements each muscle produces. These movements are based on the anatomical factors we just discussed. This is because the origin and insertion points determine what joints each muscle acts on, and the muscle architecture determines the line of pull for each muscle. To understand these concepts more clearly, let's look at two example muscles. First we have the biceps. The biceps attach up at two points on the scapula. Because this is closer to the midline, these attachment sites are called the origin. The other end of the biceps attaches on the radius, which is a bone of the forearm. Because this is further from the midline than the other attachment site, this is called the insertion. As we can see, the muscle fibers all basically span in the same direction of the muscle, running directly from the origin to insertion points. This means that the biceps primarily produce elbow flexion, but also contribute secondarily to shoulder flexion and forearm supination. Now let's look at the pec major. The pec major attaches on the humerus at one end, and at various points along the sternum and clavicle at the other end. Because the sternal and clavicular attachment sites are closer to the midline, these are considered the origin. Because the humerus attachment site is further from the midline of the body, this is considered the insertion. The pec major differs from the biceps in that the fibers span in various different directions. This means that it produces multiple different movements which emphasize different fibers. However, the primary movements it contributes to are shoulder flexion and horizontal shoulder flexion. It should also be noted that there is likely to be some individual variation between trainees. The general anatomy of everyone is fairly similar, although there are certainly differences in structure. Factors such as bone structure, muscle architecture, and origin and insertion points can all vary quite substantially between individuals. We will discuss how individual variation in anatomy influences exercise selection in another video from this series, but for now it should just be noted that some exercises may be better or worse suited to different people. Now that we understand what these terms mean, how does anatomy and biomechanics influence exercise selection for hypertrophy training? This is the most fundamental and important consideration for exercise selection. If we refer back to the previous video in this series, we should understand that the goal for hypertrophy training is to stress the muscle. While this can be achieved using a variety of different exercises and modalities, we must ensure that the target muscle is actually being stressed. The exercise we select should involve dynamic contractions of the muscles we are trying to train while overcoming resistance. This is where anatomy and biomechanics come into play. We can select exercises that require the target muscle to contract in this way to overcome the resistance of the load being used. This will be dependent on the anatomical structure and biomechanics of each individual muscle. Simply put, we must select exercises which actually train the target muscle, otherwise we are just stressing other muscles or tissues unnecessarily. Going back to our example of the biceps anatomy, we know that the biceps primarily perform elbow flexion. Therefore, to train the biceps, we should probably perform some form of elbow flexion exercise against resistance. Exercises like cable curls, dumbbell curls and barbell curls are probably all going to be good options to train the biceps based on its anatomical structure. 
This same principle applies to all other muscles too. We need to assess the anatomy and biomechanics of each muscle and ensure that we select exercises which involve the prime movements of this muscle and provides external resistance. This is the most fundamental component regarding exercise selection because we actually need the target muscle to be stressed during the exercise. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.